My name is Larry Uliberry. I do uh, a morning radio show here in Denver, Colorado. Uh, it's Denver's number one morning show, 15 years running. Love my job. The best part about my job is that it gives me other opportunities to do cool things. One being that Denver is kind of the epicenter for legal marijuana. And uh, I just happen to be a very high profile smoker in Denver. So when marijuana became legal, it just it was around the same time that I was uh, doing my podcast and we were looking for sponsorship possibilities. We were lucky enough to get a meeting with the Spidell brothers at the Green Solution. And it was just great timing. Uh, these guys are so fun to work with. They loved what we were doing. And next thing you know, we built a studio, the Green Solution Studio. And now I do my live stream out of here and my podcast. Do you remember? I bet you remember. I holding hand. I bet you remember. On and on in the back of my mind. The best thing to come out of our relationship was the fact that I was going to be able to get my own strain of marijuana. I think anybody that smokes, um, that would be just a dream come true. I've seen celebs like uh, Snoop and Wiz Khalifa get their own strains. And so I figured, you know, the world was ready for them to try some Yuli Berry. So uh, met up with Mike at the Green Solutions. He's the main guy at the grow facility. And we started from scratch. We went from seed all the way to sale. And I was able to try out a bunch of different strains and we got it narrowed it down. And so I think you're gonna enjoy the journey we're about to take you on, on how a strain is made. So uh, we got your, uh, your mom actually almost the size. Oh yeah. She's right here. She's about to uh, be clonable. So over a year ago we were coming here and this is kind of one of the first things that happens uh, to you, you put the mom and the dad together and then yeah. you get this. This one's mother essentially was blueberry. Uh, parent, uh, the father was bubble gum. Uh, the male selection process is actually quite extensive where we will uh, phenotype and actually flower the male, let it produce a whole bunch of pollen and then we'll actually test the small amount of trichomes that you will get on a male, uh, a male plant in order to determine the best potency for that male. Uh, from there, once we determine the best male, we will select the female, uh, which all of our mothers at the production facility are females. Um, so basically, when we were ready to cut the clone, it was pretty simple. We come in, we started a clone, which was uh, blueberry was the female, uh, bubblegum was the male. Uh, ultimately, we picked the two best phenotypes, uh, flowered them out uh, across the, uh, the pollen of the male and the female. Uh, from that process, basically took all those seeds, uh, selected the, only the females from those, grew all of those out, uh, phenotyped those, potency tested those, uh, all over the course of about a year, uh, maybe a little bit longer now, up until the point we've selected um, the strain for Uliberry based on potency, terpenes, um, you know, client reviews, things like that. Berry was crucial. We actually crossed everything with Berry because we wanted it to be Uli Berry. So berry was a, a requirement that we wanted, uh, it definitely in there, but like you said, it blends so well with everything else. Oh, go. thank you. Yeah. This is a mother plant. Um, when he was talking about the father plant, like, uh, we did select the best father because the, the bud was about 10 inches long, about this uh, thick, the and then we shoved it in the lady plant. And she was like, yeah, yeah, yeah! <laughs> and then it pollinated. Yeah, and then kind here of, she is. And then from here, uh, it goes to the, the next stage, which is where you get roots on it. Right, yeah, so now our next step, uh, you know, she's pretty big. We're probably gonna give her at least another week or two to grow, and then we'll take her down pretty heavy and get a, enough clones to get her in production on a production scale. Uh, so we'll clip, clip them all, and that's where I'll take you to this next room and show you kind of how we root them. Let's check it out. Well, you know, I came from a very religious household, so smoking pot was definitely like, a no-no as far as my mom was concerned. So I had gotten away with smoking pot in the house a couple times because I would go in the basement, steam up the shower near where our hot tub was and you know blow it up the fan in the bathroom. I would literally blow it in the fan. So I thought for some reason I could do the same thing in the upstairs bathroom. So I'm sitting there blowing pot out the window. I have like the bathtub running with bubbles. I got candles going, I got music. And then I hear the door handle jiggling and I'm like, oh shit. So I put the joint in my hand, jump in the tub. They both bust in, my mom's looking for pot everywhere. And I was like, what are you talking about? I'm not smoking any pot. And then my dad looks in the tub and he's like, Larry. And if you look, there's just all this herb floating in the tub. <laughs> like a rolling paper floats by. So 
from that point on, I knew I loved marijuana. To the, to the nursery. We have to be quiet in here. The babies are sleeping. Once your strain is clonable, right? Uh, we will get her to this stage. Um, you know, you got immature going all the way down to developed right. clones. Um, basically, when she's ready, we'll clip her clone. That's kind of what I did here, like this little guy. Uh, and then we'll then put them into our root oasis cube, fully synthetic media. Okay. About three weeks there, and then they start to grow roots. Uh, right, so the, right now it's just kind of like that. Yeah, just like this. If you were to pull it out, it looks just like this inside there. And we dip it in a uh, rooting hormone, which helps it soften the tissue and tell it basically to start producing roots from this right here. Uh, after about two, two or three weeks, depending on the strain, she gets to a point which we call mature. Wow. And all the roots are there, and she's ready to go on to the next stage. So this uh, is just water, and then they grow their roots before they go into the clay little balls? Yeah, the little clay pellets are actually right over here. Right. Uh, it's, it's hydrogen. Uh, it's essentially the, one of the only reusable mediums in hydroponics because we get to wash it, sanitize it, and use it again. Well, so. we're rooting for you, plant. <laughs> Definitely. So, uh, in terms of how you know your strain got to this point, uh, the males, uh, the male and the female, the mother and the father, they went through this entire process. Um, not at this exact spot, but they went through the process. We grew out the males, grew out the females, uh, potency tested all of them, uh, to determined to pick what would be the best stud, what would be the best female, uh, and then those. Uh, we, we grew those basically uh, in a room similar to this. That's the champagne room. You can't see what's going on in there. It's a lot of plants having sex. The reproductive system of the plant, basically uh, how that works is it, marijuana is an annual plant, so growing in the wild, it's wind pollinated. So at the end of the year, when the males drop pollen, it gets carried by the wind, just like any other plant similar to that. Uh, the pollen then lands on the female now. If you've ever seen a female about three weeks in flower, three or four, all the little white hairs sticking off of those. If you look at that under a, like a microscope, each one looks like this. Like and a pair of legs in the air. Yeah! Yes. You know, at that point, pollen comes flying along and lands inside there. Again, each one of those is essentially the reproductive system for the, uh, for the plant. And once that pollen gets down inside there, it yeah. <laughs> yeah. fertilizes the egg. Uh, and then from there, she will quit producing flower. In the circle of life. To seeds. Right. Yeah. And then we set them in the cocoa puffs. Uh, well, in terms of your strain, after she produces the seeds, we'll then take all those seeds, typically, depending on how many plants we do, and we can get upwards of five, 600 seeds. Uh, we then have to select a percentage of those because we can't do them all as much as we would like to. Mm -hmm. uh, we grow those out, select all the females, and then we flower all the females, and then basically pick the best one from there based on potency, look, smell, taste, uh, how it grows, uh, pest resistance, vigor. There's just a number of things that go into making that selection. So the next room is the flower room. Uh, the next room is actually still oh. veg. So oh, okay. this actually would be considered vegetative growth as well. Okay. Uh, because the plants are on 18 hours of light, six hours of darkness. Uh, once we switch to 12-12, that's when we go 12 hours of light, 12 hours of darkness, that's when it's uh, considered going to flower. We're simulating the, the time of the year. That's the cool. So if you want to, let me just put these away and we'll just go take a look at the next step. So I'm with a friend of mine. He's a kind of a... Not like I didn't know him for a long time, but he's just a buddy. And there we go up to Snoop's dressing room. Nate Dog is there. Um, Snoop's angels. So I toss the container to Snoop. He opens it and he's all, oh, hell yeah. He goes, I'm going to need this. And I'm going to need some more. And I was like, hey, I, I can definitely get more. I can just, you know, make a phone call. He's all, well, then make the motherfucking call. So I was like, okay, cool. You know, we start breaking up the herb and... I was gonna roll a blunt, Snoop was rolling a blunt, and this friend of mine that I, you know, wasn't besties with said, do you know how to roll a blunt? And he was like, oh yeah, for sure, you know, he didn't hesitate, so I had confidence that he would be able to roll the blunt. Next thing I know, um, from across the room, I hear Nate Dog go, hold up, who the fuck rolled this shit? Wait. Turn around, I looked at my friend, and he was like, sorry. <laughs> So I'm gonna take you to veg now. So um, again, all of it's veg growth till we get to flower, but this is just the next stage of it. So this is the veg room. It feels like a tropical forest. 
Ooh, nice. Yeah. So these would be definitely like if the other ones were considered babies, these would be adolescents. Ad yeah, adolescents. It's a good okay. way to put it. Yeah. And then they they'll be leaving here in their their uh, late teen years, if you will. So the taller the plant, the more it's uh, longer it's been right, here, right, older it is. Move, move on. Yes, sir. Yep. Um, okay, and so as far as my strain goes, um, your parents actually. Yeah, we're, we're through this. Went through this whole process, the mother and the and the father. Right, we um, went uh, heavy indica. I could pull one out for you here to give you an idea of the, the size and. Wow, look at those roots. It's kind of exactly what we're looking for. Some really nice roots down there. Just a picture perfect plant. Wow. Really nice, good, thick green stems. It shows really good accelerated growth. Um, node spacing is a little bit further than we would like. This is a node. It's where the, each node is where a bud site would be, essentially. Uh, when you, one of the constraints of commercial growing is space. So when plants are grown kind of close together, they'll fight oh, for, okay, the, for, for the light. And that's where you'll get the, the nodal growth. It's a little bit further than we would like, but it's not that big of a deal. What's the purpose of the lights going up and down? Uh, just so we can uh, maintain the uh, max amount of intensity. Oh, there so you we're, go. we're gonna right now, for instance, we would measure what this light is at prior to it going to flower, and when it gets over there, we would then equal that that reading in terms of spectrum of par, so that we're not shocking the plant. In other words, because again, marijuana is an annual, so the intensity of the sun, aside from some cloudy days, the overall average intensity isn't going to change on the you know given unless it's like the time of the year. Are the fans? Um, in order to just have movement so it kind of recreates the actual outdoors? Yep, yep. All we're trying to do inside is mimic the outside as best as possible. So the purpose of the fan is to circulate the air. Um, plants thrive on CO2. Um, we also pump CO2 into this entire building so that it helps accelerate the growth because your typical ambient air is about 500 parts per million. Uh, we want around 1,000 in veg up to, up to a max of 1,500 parts per million in flower. Uh, and that will help just, it basically is, in, it's like, uh, just helping them breathe a lot heavier and just accelerate that growth. The whole purpose of hydroponics is rapid, accelerated growth. Hey, come down and get in the, get in the forest, okay. man. Your strain hasn't gone through this process yet, but the parents did. Okay. Uh, the, the blueberry and the bubble gum went through this entire process. The male, we actually had bubble gum as a female and a male. So oh, wow. we, you know, we were able to see both of those prior to making the selection. So, yeah, I could definitely live here. <laughs> Looks like Uliberry is leaning towards heavy indica. Yeah, yeah, definitely. We, Based on how I've seen it grow. And yeah, yeah. And yeah, that was by design. We, we went through all the strains, actually, and <laughs> that was a fun process, to say the least. Hey, what's up, everybody? It's Larry Uliberry. I am about to test a bunch of different strains from the green solution so I can narrow it down to the Uliberry. So, I'm gonna go through some strains and find out which ones I like and which ones I love. Ooh, that's a good one. Oh yeah. Whoa. I love smoking pot. <laughs> oh yeah. Check this. Hello, this is Morgan Wheatman, and I'm smoking marijuana from the Green Solution. I'm not doing blackface, I'm doing black voice. All right, we're trying another strain, just put it in the grinder. I don't see nothing wrong with a little bump and grind. I wish you could smell this. All right, here we go again.
right, we're gonna do uh, a strain that Oh yeah. What? So, cotton mouth. I have a question for everybody. Have you seen my childhood? I'm searching for the guy I used to be. Why can't you share your bed? <laughs> Alex Schwarzenegger, I'm too high. I couldn't even talk right now. <laughs> Seriously, I'm way too So this is heaven. Flower power. <laughs> the power of flower. Wow, this is so beautiful. Yeah. I wish people could smell it because it really smells amazing in here. It does. The terpenes, and we're actually starting to do a lot with terpenes, man. The terpenes are what actually are the smell, uh, produce the smell, like lemonine. That's uh, one of the new products that you guys have. Yeah, the can... roll on. You yeah, can roll it smells on a joint. so yeah, good. The potency enhancers. Right, right. They really enhance the flavor a lot. And as well. they add a little THC in there. A little bit. There you go. Yeah, definitely. Uh, this entire corridor is a flower right now, so that explains why it's quite so pungent in here. Everything's about a week from harvest. So these will eventually get the leaves trimmed off, and then they will be cured, and then we can enjoy them once we pull up at the Green Solution dispenser. Yep. From the day it chops, about two weeks. Wow. Until it's in the jar, sitting on the shelf. So this is uh, give or take. an ongoing process because you have these plants being cured and then the new guys come in, same process yeah, constantly. Yeah, we, uh, we have set our company up to where we are perpetually harvesting 365 days a year, seven days a week. That's awesome. I believe what you're doing is God's work. Well, I'm anxious to get to the curing room so I can see how well hung your plants are. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Say they're pretty well hung there. Um, yes, I would say you guys have done a great job. Like this is like the best room I've been in yet, and because it seems like these are ready to be like actually smoked. Yeah, they're about four or five days. Uh, they'll dry trim this week. Um, I'm gonna throw on gloves here. I'll kind of oh, show yeah. you this process. We have to use nitrile gloves actually because we're not even allowed to use latex um, due to the fact that some people, our, our consumers, have latex allergies. Oh wow! So by touching the product with latex, it, it can pose a risk to them. Okay. So we don't use latex. We actually, use nitrile. Step. These guys will take it here. Just give it a little haircut, kind of like this. And <laughs> believe me, I'm not the best trimmer. My trimmers uh, are very, very skilled at what they do. It's not an easy job and and uh, it takes some, some very good handwork to get this to our, our, our standard product, so. It's like topiary, it's like you're gonna make a giraffe. Oh look, it's a squirrel. Yeah. Um, I accept your offer, <laughs> and I'd like to be alone for a little bit. Okay. Whoa. Oh. So then that'll be trimmed here and then put in the actual containers where people buy from. Yep, exactly, after you know, it's all in its stem, so they'll, all right. they'll you know, nug it out, clip it about there, right. about down here, you know, and piece it apart. So this is the final product. Yes, sir. Yeah. And That's... nobody's ever seen a bag like this in person. Rarely would anybody see this. But I mean, this is what everybody's ever dreamed about. Like, you've yeah. wanted a bag this big ever since you started smoking. Then you lick the end and you roll yeah. it like that. And <laughs> the closed. old sandwich right. fold. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> No, no, but uh, what, what is the, how much herb is this? This is actually a pound. We, we pretty much package all our product in, uh, in pound increments, so everything's about a pound. So if, you, if anybody's ever wanted to see five pounds, wow. what five pounds looks like. Can we handle this? Yeah, definitely. We gotta throw on some new gloves, new surfaces, fresh, clean surfaces every time we touch the product. Yeah, because uh, basically that's the one thing that you guys uh, tout is that you, 
it's not really touched by a bunch of people. Your herb, when it gets to you, it's really, it really hasn't been handled hasn't by really, human hands. Yeah, and if it has, uh, they've been protected. Can I do ours. the dump? Yeah, All right, please. Cool. This is Purple Dream. This is a really nice, uh, heavily, densely packed Yeah, tight good, nice, bud. thick nugs. Uh, we'll break one open here and you can just see <gasps> down in there just wow. really, really coated with resin, resin glands. You know, in terms, I, mean, I smoke a lot of chronic and, you know, I like all of it. Right. I mean, as long as it smells good, tastes good, and, and looks good and does the trick, right. then you're going to like it. Well, this um, is the optimal kind of bud you want. It's like thick, dense. If you put this in a grinder, you're going to get it'll so break much out. out of this. Yeah, yeah it'll so break much. out really nice, definitely. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, the purpose of going to the next processing site is so, as you can see, this looks pretty darn good. But yeah, there's still, close. you know, some crow's feet, you know, a couple little stems here and there, typical things that you're going to see, you know, at other dispensaries. But we like to have our guys go through it and give it that one more level Quality of refinement yeah. so that what you're, you know, getting is just top notch finished product. This has uh, honestly been like uh, amazing this whole past Next year. Next time it'll be uh, Euliberry. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. This past year's been so educational and. Uh, now, since we've been shooting this all day, I'd like to get to the actual uh, sales area and buy some of this and smoke it. I'm with you. <laughs> Let's do that. Well, welcome to the tomorrow world of cannabis, Larry. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, man. Pretty intense, right? This is like jaw dropping. Never seen anything like this. Yeah. This is our third facility. Uh, we've been going in this one for about a year and a half now. I can't believe how high you go up, and it's like insane. Yeah. There's five levels. Uh, it's about you know 35 feet, 40 maybe once you're all the way up there. So this is kind of like uh, in the movie The Matrix when you <laughs> saw Neo and he was in his little, little bubble, and then they pulled back. And you saw the enormity of it? Yeah, yeah, that's, that's a good way to sum it up, man. Um, especially if, well, first time walking in here, which it was for you today, I saw the look on your face. Yeah, oh my like, God, jaw Holy <laughs> bad work. And well, and it's so high tech what you guys are doing. It's like nobody's ever really done it like this. No, man, definitely not. And, you know, that's kind of what we pride ourselves on at TGS is doing it like no one else does it. And when it came time to figuring out the best way to maximize what we're trying to do, which is grow. Uh, a lot of cannabis for as cheap as possible with the cost of real estate going vertical made sense well and then you got to get this water all the way up there and you were saying it's all about keeping the temperature right uh yes and one thing we had to overcome was making sure that that temperature was good both up top and down low so we create convection uh with what we call vertical column fans which you can't see them right here but they're around and they just basically keep the air doing this all the time well, dude, thank you so much for everything you've Absolutely. done for my strain personally and for what you do in general, but I appreciate it and uh, take good care of my babies. I will, man. I'll be looking forward to growing it. Right on, man. All right, man. Take Thanks it easy. Thanks a lot. So I think the only thing that's left to do pretty much is just wait for Euliberry to hit stores. It'll be at the Green Solution in a couple months, so they always say waiting is the hardest part. Oh.